Right. Good day, class. Today we will be discussing e paraphrasing. All right. So let's talk about paraphrasing. What is the importance of paraphrasing? And uh, what is the uh, uh, what does paraphrasing mean? So when we say paraphrasing, to put something into your own words. So when you para uh, pa when you do paraphrasing. You need to make sure that this is your own word, your own words, and uh, how you formulate your own ideas based on the topic that you got from the different sources. So when we say paraphrasing, this is your own interpretation of ideas that we were said by someone else, especially if you are getting some ideas from other authors, then uh, you wanted to make sure that uh, you will not accuse of plagiarism, then you have to make it to your own words, okay? So make sure that you have to a way to borrow from a source. Well, if you're having a hard time of how to paraphrase, then I'm gonna give you the sub techniques in order for you to understand how to do paraphrasing, all right? So first, we have to change to synonyms, like for example, that particular word, um, joy, you can change it to happy. So you have to find another uh, meaning for that, like make sure that you have a lot of vocabularies uh, for you to be able to make your own words. So synonym is also one way of doing it. You can also change word forms, like the, like the word forms and uh, change from a clause to a phrase. You can also change from quoted speech to indirect speech and uh, change from active voice to passive voice. So we all know that when we say active voice, active voice, the, the action, or I mean, the subject is uh, doing the action, okay? Is the doer of the action. While the passive voice, the subject acted upon. So, for example, in active voice, Anna, um, what is the good example here? Anna build the house. Anna build the house. So, you can actually um, put it in the passive voice. The house was built by Anna. So, those are the differences. Um, for example, active voice is used by the the author, then you can definitely use passive voice for that, vice versa. And uh, you also interpret meaning and they identify the underlying meaning of a statement for you to be able to formulate your own ideas towards the source that you have. And then uh, change transition if that's possible. So change to synonym. For example, the stallion was content with the mare. So we have to change content to a different uh, synonym or different word. So the stallion was happy with the mail. Try this. Uh, after he ate lunch, John took a nap. All right, you have to change it. She has an alluring beauty. I like her. So that is for the uh, synonym. Now, if you wanted to change alluring beauty or whatsoever, then you have to find a different synonym for that. Okay. So now let's interpret meaning. Uh, interpret meaning, it's identified the underlying meaning of a statement. So when you do interpret, like for example, the teacher teaching, uh, his or her lesson, then at the end of the discussion, the teacher will ask, what do you understand? So basically, you are formulating your own ideas, not totally explaining what the teacher has been said. You cannot just repeat what the words of the teacher use. You can make it on your own. So same situation on this, how you interpret the ideas, how you interpret the source, uh, the source that you have, then if you know how to interpret that because you understand, then therefore you will understand the underlying meaning of that particular statement. Okay, for example, this one, Mrs. Lee said, I am ready for lunch. So 
you can interpret that by saying Miss Lee complained about being hungry, right? Um, because you understand that Miss Lee uh, ready for lunch, and therefore is trying to complain about being hungry, correct? You can also try this on your own. She entered the office and shut the door aloud. What, what is that attitude in there? Can be happy, upset, or what? It's all up to you. His answer could raise a lot of issues. So how you interpret that? Now let's change word forms. Change word forms. So use an adverb instead of an adjective. Use a verb to replace a noun. And uh, for example, uh, just like what I said, change word form. So use an adverb instead of an adjective. Okay. So use a verb to replace a noun. Okay. So John is an accurately typist. So John types accurately. You can also use that, right? Accurately, it's somehow a kind of adverb. Um, another one is she is fluent in English. So she is a nature lover. Okay, so those are the types of word form. So if you're going to ask me, sir, why do we need to paraphrase? Simply because it's better than quoting lots of information. You don't quote as much or leaving more room for your ideas. When you put an idea in your own words, you understand it better, right? Because this is how the teacher you know, trying to um not measuring the ideas that you have but uh having the idea that this student understand the lesson well because you can interpret the discussion on your own word okay so the reason for that as well is to avoid plagiarism nowadays we're easily going to internet online sources got all the information without without doing paraphrasing i mean there's nothing wrong of getting an information or getting idea through internet or any online platforms. But just to make sure that you are what? That you are also doing your part by changing it. You cannot just pass it to your teacher because you got it from the sources that you have. Um, you need to understand what are you doing? What are you writing? Or what is the author talking about? So you have to change it on your own. So plagiarism class is uh, don't write word for word what someone writes or says, okay? Do not write everything. Don't cut and paste when you're researching for a paper or project, especially you. Um, sooner or later, you will be making your own thesis. And it's very important that the product of thesis is not the product of or the work of others other authors other sources but we wanted to make sure that your input is there because what is the use of or what is the purpose of thesis if you are just copying it from the other works then uh, might as well the teacher will ask you okay um collect all the ideas of the authors okay from that particular topic and that would be easier for you no but this is a thesis this is your work this is how you understand things okay and uh plagiarism class the unauthorized use of the language and thoughts of an, another author and saying they are your own so you want it we wanted to make sure we have to avoid that it's uh it's a big no-no because it's a form of stealing it's a uh, it, it, it's really bad for your uh, for your image as well uh, if you are applying to uh, for a job and uh, you, your work are all product of plagiarism and at the same time if you are a student it's also not really good for your performance if the teacher noticed that you are doing plagiarism or you plagiarize your work so the teacher might think that you are not doing your part as a student, okay? So ways to effectively paraphrase is, uh, what is a paraphrase? Okay, we have that question, what is a paraphrase? Um, ways to effectively paraphrase, again, class, just wanna make sure. 
Number one, what is a paraphrase? Reason why we should paraphrase. Paraphrase to given sentences. Part to six. Yes, Miss uh, Regarda. This because this is E. This is in uh, for your uh, asynchronous activity. So ways to be effectively paraphrase. Uh, there are so much ways that I just said. The one that I just gave you earlier, the technique is uh, is 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 how you paraphrase. But this time you will be doing your work or your asynchronous activities. So I hope you learned something from paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is applicable for all subject that you have. Even you're taking math or as well as the uh, science subject, it's also important that you are not paraphrase. Or I'm sorry, you are doing paraphrase uh, to all of your assignment or uh, essay things like that, because it's actually good not for us but for yourself as well. In the near future, you will understand what is what what is the purpose or what is the reason why paraphrasing is very important. I am telling you, especially if you're working as a secretary or eventually you will become a professional, then if you're doing, e, if you don't understand the process or what the importance of paraphrase is, um, it will not just, you will not just accountable for this, but as well as the company that you are working with, you will put their name into risk. Okay, so do not jeopardize their, company because you don't understand the paraphrase is that's why you're going to say sir it's a uh, paraphrasing is very easy for very easy to understand well i agree with you on that but it's not easy to follow right okay it's easy to understand therefore you cannot uh, follow or understand the concept and doing it and apply it on your own so um, i noticed that some of the students as well when we um when we're giving them an assignment um we see that some of the uh, answer coming from social coming from the google without uh without paraphrasing well if that's a quote or quotation from the author that's fine but you have to acknowledge who is the author that therefore it's not a plagiarism because we're trying to recognize his ideas his work, his wisdom, or whatsoever, then therefore you will not accountable for that. Okay. So if you have any question, um, you will. Um, if you have any question, then uh, once we resume our class on Thursday, then you can ask me this question. But um, you can also answer the synchronous activity, the one that I just uh, posted. All right. So that's all for now. Goodbye and thank you. Thank you.